The following movie is rated R. Sorry for the delay, but I didn't want anybody seeing me, if you know what I mean. What can I get you, sir? Just a coffee. Coming right up. It's not my habit to sit with people like you. Got a business proposition for you, detective. I ain't no businessman. And even if I were, I wouldn't be doing business with the likes of you. I don't usually do business with your kind either. But this is a bit of a strange deal. Good for you and your superiors, and good for me. It concerns a certain kind of trade. Trade? Well, let's just say that I hold a high position in a not-so-legal organization. It's just the kind of organization people such as yourself would like to know a lot about. And I, on the other hand, for certain reasons, don't want... Your coffee, sir. Thanks. 
I have my own personal reasons why I don't want to be associated with this organization. It ain't too easy to leave this kind of business, if you know what I mean. I think I know where you're coming from. You'll get a bullet in your head if you don't disappear quickly, right? That's not the only reason. Got any kids, Detective? I've got a wife and daughter. I don't want them to have any problems because of me. Yeah, well, I ain't just gonna hand out protection to any wop crook. You should have thought about them kids before, cause I... Sure, sure. Listen, I don't want something for nothing. So here's the deal. Does the name Salieri mean anything to you? Salieri? It damn well does! You got something to come with him? You could say that. I've worked for him for several years. Now he wants to rub me out. If you protect my family and me, I'll tell you everything. Names, dates, accounts, everything. Enough to put him away for life. I ain't Santa Claus. If I go to the Chief with this, I need to know everything you know. And I have to be sure you'll testify in court. Sure. If you ain't in a hurry, I'll tell you my whole story. And all the deals I've worked on over the years. Okay. I've got time, and I'm listening. I used to be a taxi driver. Even though I wasn't making much and I worked from dawn to dusk, I was glad to be working. It was a bad time and some other people were worse off than me. It was that very taxi that drew Salieri's people to me in the first place. One day I was on my break and I was just hanging out, suddenly I heard a tremendous crash. Sam! They got me! Damn it! Climb up and move. There's a taxi. We'll be okay. It was clear to me that these guys had to get out of there fast, so I thought it was best to cooperate, rather than ending up with a hole in my head. Move it. Come on! Where to? Anywhere! Fast! I hope you're damn fast! Faster than Sam here was! I burned rubber out of there like a bat out of hell. It didn't matter where, just away from those gentlemen who were chasing my new customers. Finally, we're home. Wait here, friend. Sam will get you a little something for Mr. Salieri. Thanks for your help. Mr. Salieri would like to thank you as well as myself and Pauly. It's compensation for the damage to your car and your services. 
It should be enough. Yes, uh, of course. Thanks. Uh, give my regards to Mr. Salieri. Mr. Salieri wants you to know that he is very grateful to you. If you ever need anything, you can come back and ask for help, because Mr. Salieri doesn't forget about friends who have helped him out. If you're interested, maybe we could find a job for you here. And it would pay well. We always have positions for guys as good as you. Okay, uh, okay. I'll think about it. Thanks. Uh, really, thanks. I'd, I'd better go uh, to fix the car and so on. All right. I understand. Just think about it. And I hope it's clear that this matter is only between ourselves. You take care, kid. When I opened the envelope, I almost had a heart attack. There was more than it would cost to do the repairs. But I didn't for a minute think about their offer. I didn't want to join some criminals, even if they had all the money in the world. It's better to be poor and alive than rich and dead, right? I was going to get my cab repaired and try to forget it all as soon as possible. As my mother always said, you can never predict what God has in store for you. I had a cup of coffee and relaxed in the car. While I was waiting to see if I could get another customer, I noticed I wasn't far from Salieri's bar. Jesus! We got you, you little rat. Mr. Morello's pretty angry with you. We're gonna have to teach you a little lesson so you remember that it ain't right. <laughs> Those bastards remembered the license plate of my car and took it on themselves to hunt me down. Lou here will fix your face a little. Salieri's boy saved my skin that time, but I certainly wasn't in a good situation. I had paid off my debts for the car repairs, but my boss didn't want to employ anyone who's in the mob. It just wasn't good business. When I saw the fancy getup of Salieri's boys, I thought that it can't be too bad to work for him. Besides, I had nothing to lose. Morello was out to get me, so driving a cab wasn't the best job. Plus, the prospect of Salieri's dough wasn't so terrible. So like I always say, better to die young and loaded. Well, it looks like Morello is really trying to make me mad. But I'm a reasonable person. What do they call you, son? Thomas Angelo. I've decided to give you a shot, Tommy. I like new faces. We're one big family here. You already know Paulie and Sam. Frank here is my right hand and looks after the legal side of our business. The one behind the bar is Luigi. This business ain't easy to swallow, but Luigi's a wonderful cook. Paul will introduce you to Vincenzo and Ralph. There are a lot of us, but those should be enough for now. Now listen, and listen good. We have some rules around here. Don't cross paths with the cops. They're on our payroll, so they'll leave you alone. But if you go too far, they'll all come after you. Money or no money. If they ever pick you up, say nothing, and I will take care of you. I show my gratitude to those people that helped me, and there aren't many left to betray me. Capiche? Yes, Mr. Salieri. I'm glad. 
Today I'll give you a chance to get back at those bastards who wrecked your taxi. We'll see what you're made of. Morello has a bar where all his gorillas go. They all have their cars parked behind the fence next to the bar. If you're good, they won't be there tomorrow morning. <laughs> Paulie will go with you just in case. Go see Vincenzo for equipment and Ralph for some wheels. I wouldn't trust him so much. He seemed hesitant. He's just accepting now because he has no choice. We'll see, Frank. We'll see. I'm more concerned about what Morello's problem is. Does he really want to start a war? Vincenzo is a Don's gun expert. They've known each other since they were kids. He gets you whatever you want. Tommy guns to cannons. Then he can set you up. I always pay him a visit before a job. Buono giorno, Vincenzo. Ciao, Paulie. This here's Tom. Just started up with us. Pleased to meet you, Tom. What can I do for the both of you? We got a job to do. We need something to write off a few cars. This classic piece of sports equipment should do the job, and if not... I'd mixed up a few cocktails. Careful with him, though. Thanks a lot, Vincenzo. Bring back the bat. It's my nephew's. Sure thing. Ralph, I'll introduce you to, is a complete idiot. But he's got a special way with cars. I don't get how such a moron could know anything about anything. But that's the way it goes sometimes. <laughs> a v v v v visit. How you all doing, Polly? Hey, Ralphie. Yeah, I s s see you're still limping, so we got two cripples working here. That's right, but I ain't a fool. Um, uh -huh. Ralph, this is Tom. If you bring him a stolen car, Tommy, I'll make it your own, and no one will know the difference. Ralph, Tom and me have a job to do. You're supposed to have some wheels for us? Right. <laughs> here it is. <laughs> It ain't no hot rod, <laughs> but it should really do for you. Thanks, Ralphie. Let's go. So we're back, boss. Wonderful. Take a seat. It all went well? Sure, boss. He's a natural. Before they could say Ganolis, they were wheelers. And before they could recover, we were gone. Morello is probably pretty pissed right now. Really? I'm glad to hear it. He's one tough customer. In that case, welcome to the family, Tommy. You've passed the first it's test. It's an honor, sir. And now, we've got a new member. I'd like to take him into the outfit, boss. You can see he ain't scared. And he's done real good. You didn't disappoint me, Tommy. Now, let's drink. Thanks. Today we're gonna visit a few places to collect some protection money. Two restaurants and a motel outside of town. Bill at the motel was late last time because he had a few problems. So today, he'll pay a little more. You may have heard about how criminals can prey on businesses using various threats. That certainly isn't the case with us. People who pay us receive services, which the police certainly can't provide them with. Last month, for example, Sam and Paulie here solved a serious problem with violence in a delightful restaurant. The owner is now satisfied that nothing of that sort will happen there again. You'll do the driving. Paulie and Sam will do the collecting. It'll be routine. Tell Ralph to give you a car, and you can go. Okay, boss. Well... You and I'll have a drink. What do you say, Frank? <laughs> I 
Wait for us here, Tom. We'll be back in a bit. Okay. Let's go. Tom, I, I took one. Ah, it Jesus hurts. Jesus Christ, Polly. Tell Salieri from here on out this place is ours. Capiche? Don't come back here. You'll end up in worse shape than your friends. Get Sam. They want to beat some information out of him. Get him out of there. But I gotta get you to a doctor. That'll wait. First, get Sam. Screw regular routine. Get up, Sam. Oh. It's over. He really went to work on you, buddy. Let's go. Oh. Christ. Uh. Oh. It's nothing. Mm. You'll be all right. <clears throat> Doctor will put you back together again. Oh. You're tough as nails. Mm. Oh. oh, shit. Mm. That's it. I'll get you back in the car. Uh, Everything is okay. Don't oh. move, scumbag, or I'll fill you with holes. Come on. Just try it. You won't get past me. Sure thing, buddy. Uh, just stay cool. Everything's okay. Just go. No problem. Just try it. No. God. Uh, do Get him. That's how I got into it. One minute a regular cabbie, the next a respected mafioso. You were all right with killing people? Usually people have a problem with that. You know, I ain't one of those people with a thirst for blood. I don't need violence in my life, and I don't look for trouble. But I also don't have any remorse. They wanted to outsmart us, so we had to outsmart them. No excuses. It was all the same to me. I wasn't interested in the fates of other people. Everybody said it was just business, and that the family sticks together. It was different from living alone and nobody giving a damn about you. Suddenly you're respected by all the people you meet. Everybody knows you can help them, but you can also destroy their lives. And everybody tries to ingratiate themselves to you. And what about the police? You just walked away, just like that, from a massacre. Didn't you have any problem with this? You work for the police. You ought to know. You know the Mafia runs the whole city. The Salieri family makes over 25 million bucks every year. The papers were full of it. But nobody saw nothing. If they wanted to stay alive. We paid off the bureaucrats six grand a month. Your bosses had liquor at trade price and got payouts for special jobs from both Salieri and Morello. Case closed. Lack of evidence. Cops would even move shipments of drink for us. I guess you'd have heard something about that. So what about your two friends? Well, they were better off than you'd think. Salieri had a good doc for his boys, and it's not like he ever asked any questions. In a few weeks, they'd be healthy and back on the streets again. The only one who worried us was Morello. He wanted to be the big cheese, which Salieri couldn't let him do. Salieri had no intention of being in second place. You know, a person becomes a Don because of his thirst for power. And he doesn't care about any other rules than his own. That's how it is, Detective. So he'd be his own boss. Independent of the police, 
of the state of anyone. That's why a person becomes a Don. Salieri and Morello both wanted it all. They kept sparring with each other, but they both knew that if it all blew up, it would be hell. The big difference between them was in their methods. I heard a little story about Morello. I, uh, I'm, I'm sorry, sir. Um, you I idiot. mean it. Do you know what you've done? Do you know how much that car cost? I, uh, I was driving slowly, Mr. Morello. Uh, I don't know how, uh... Do you mean to say that I... I crashed into your car? Uh, uh, no. Sir, I, uh, I only... I wanted... Uh, no, sir, I... No! Bastard! Get! In my way. Salieri built his respect as a businessman. Everybody knew that they didn't need to fear him if they did what they should. They knew that if they needed something, they could come to Mr. Salieri. So Salieri made friends, often helped people with various problems, and expected the same in return. When somebody crossed him, they broke a cardinal rule, and everybody knew what would happen. Morello was just a mean bastard. He built his power through violence. Even his friends feared him. Most people just tried to avoid him. Listen, Tommy, I have a delicate job for you. I don't know anyone else who could do it better than you. You're a good driver, and you have experience. Well, to make it simple, tomorrow all the best motors are going to race at the city track. And I bet on one kid who's been a favorite up until now. I helped him along in his career a little. I like fast cars, and I said to myself that I could make back a little on that investment. You understand? And then Ralphie starts saying that some European has come over, and his car is certain to win. Ralphie knows cars. He's real good with them. But otherwise, he's a complete moron. What, he couldn't have told me before I bet on the kid? But still, what the hell is a guy, God knows from where, doing here? These are American races. Me and the consigliere here were thinking about what to do. Because a lot of our boys have bet the same as me, and they certainly wouldn't be happy if they lost their dough. And how would that make me look? Like an old idiot. Tommy, I can't let that happen. We thought with our consigliere about what to do with it. If something happens to him, that's no way. It won't be fair play. I won't enjoy my winning at all. Ralph told me that he knows a guy who guards the racetrack garage. Tonight, you're gonna go there and take this European's car to a but mechanic who knows his way around these machines. He'll take a look at theirs and maybe improve ours. As soon as he's finished working on it, you'll take it back. It's important that the car is back in its place before anybody catches on. And don't even think but about crashing it or getting I... caught by the cops. Are we clear? Yes, boss. If you pull it off, you'll of course get a share of the winnings. Now go. Ralph will tell you where and how. Hey there, you're from Mr. Salieri, right? I'm Lucas Bertoni. Hi, I'm Tom. They say you can take the bite out of this monster. I reckon so. Well, you'd better get moving. We only have 27 minutes left. Hmm, that ain't much time.
We'll see what could be done. You can hang out a while. Hey, how's it going in there? Just finished. You can go. Uh, but you're gonna have to hurry. It ain't gonna run as well as when you first brought it in. Thanks. Mr. Salieri appreciates your work. Sure, give my regards to him. If he ever needs anything again, I'd be glad to help out. I'd bet on the same driver as him. Hey, Luigi. Hey, Tommy. Where is everybody? They're all at the track. You're late. I needed to get a little sleep after last night's job. Sure. Hello? Yes? Sorry, just got in. Sure. That's for you, Tom. Hello? Frank here. Tom? You did well yesterday, but now we need your help again. Come over to the racing track right away. That guy who was supposed to win the race got his arm broken by some thug. Probably no coincidence. Anyway, you're gonna have to race. But, but, Frank, Tom, I... Tom, it's a half an hour before the race. So I don't have time to teach someone else how to drive. Christ, Tom, this concerns a big bag of money. I hope you understand that. Yeah, okay. Frank... So I expect to see you here at the track in a few minutes. You don't look too excited. That's because I ain't. Hey, Tommy, I knew we could count on you. You really want me to do this? I've never raced before. Okay, I know it won't be easy, but we don't have a choice. If you can do it, we won't lose out. Do I look like I can do this? I don't even know the rules. Look, it's a cakewalk. You go five laps, you need to come in first for us to win. If you come in second, the dough's lost. But since we tuned that clown's car a little, everything should go smoothly. Also, at those speeds, it's quite normal for someone to bang into you. So watch out for those other bastards. Good luck, Tom. I know you can do it. Well, I don't believe it. <clears throat> Tom, half the neighborhood and all our boys bet on the Don's boy. Do you know what it would mean if you lost? The Don would lose. You would lose all the respect which we busted our asses to build up. People give us their trust as well as their dough. Do you understand what's at stake? Yeah, I got it, Frank. I understand. Take it easy, son. Show them what you're made of. I knew you wouldn't let us down, Tommy. You're really one of us now. A lot of people made a lot of money on that race, Tommy. And you get all the credit. So you won't come out short. You should stop by and see Lucas Bertoni. He also bet and won a pile of money. So he wants to repay you, too. Somehow. Okay, I will. Congratulations, you big Thanks. hero. Hello, is there anyone home? Hey, Tommy, right here. <laughs> hey, Tom, congratulations on winning, huh? Oh, you did great. I didn't really think you'd do it at first, huh? But when you got going, I knew how it would end, yeah. Thanks to you, I won a big bag of money. And just so you know I'm not ungrateful, I'll teach you a few tricks. You see that, Butte? 
Well, now I can't give it to you, but I can show you how to lift one and where. Watch how easy it is to get into this baby. There you go. Piece of cake. Okay. I figure I can manage that. There's another one that belongs to a loaded official down at City Hall. During the day, it sits in a car lot behind a municipal building on Central Island. I think I might go and check if it's, uh, parked correctly. When you get tired of that, stop back here. I always have something new. Thanks, Lucas. I'll come by sometime after work. I'll be seeing you. One evening, after a slow day, I was sitting alone at Salieri's and just drinking. Luigi came over to me and asked me if I wouldn't do him a favor. Hey, Tommy. You know my daughter, right? Yeah, Luigi. Nice girl. You must be proud. Thanks, Tommy. She sometimes helps out here behind the bar. Thing is, I don't want her to walk home alone tonight. Only yesterday some stupid punks gave us some problems. You know, with all that dirty talk and all that. You know, I am worried about the girl. So I thought that maybe you could see her home. It's not far away. You're a gentleman and you have a lot of respect in this neighborhood. Those punks wouldn't try anything with you around. No problem, Luigi. It'll be a walk in the park. Oh, Tom, you cannot imagine how grateful I am. Bam, I was worried. No one knows who these guys are. Come in for lunch tomorrow and I'll do something special. Sarah, come over here. Sarah, this is Tommy. He'll take you home and make sure those punks don't bother you anymore. Hello. Hello, thanks a lot. It won't take you long. I don't live very far from here. Let me get my coat and then we can go. Okay, I'll wait for you outside. Hey, looky here. Who's the cute pair? There they are. What's up? You were alone last night, darling, and tonight you have a boyfriend. Boys, I think it would be better if you just go away and not make any problems. I think the only one here with a problem is you, Chief. If I were in your shoes, I'd leave right now. You never know what might happen. We'll see, lover boy. So, this is my kingdom. Come in and take a load off. I'll have a look at your wounds. This is quite a kingdom. Roll up your sleeves, sir. Help is at hand. Well, let's have a look. Hmm. Doesn't look too serious. Yeah, yeah, that's true. They looked a lot worse than they are. Hmm. Hold on a second. I'll clean it. There you go. It didn't even hurt. Thank you. It's me who should be thanking you. Would you care for a drink, Tom? Well, I could use a little whiskey, if you got it. Sure thing. This evening's getting interesting. Here you go, hero. So... Do you swing? What? Do you like dancing, music? I have a gramophone. Yeah, I like music. Are Salieri's men tough with everyone? Well, we try to be gentle with people sometimes. Some of you, maybe. But only a few. And are you one of Salieri's tough guys? Only sometimes. Well, I think you're a very good bad man. Oh, sometimes I'm even a very bad good man.
Sarah was an angel. I had a lot of girls before that, but that was something different. Very different. It was clear to me that if I was going to spend the rest of my life with someone, it would be with her. The very next day, I told Salieri what happened with the punks. The gang of hoodlums had set up residence in his territory, causing trouble and scaring good people. Don Salieri was not pleased. What? In my territory? The nerve. And on top of that, they attacked defenseless women. Did anything happen to Sarah, Tommy? No, boss. She's okay. I took care of it. Good. Why the hell didn't Luigi say something? We could have taken care of this immediately. I won't stand for those chicken shits attacking people in my territory. Who do they think they are? They pay me for protection, so we've got to get these punks and put them where they belong. Me and Tom will fix it. Those bastards think this is freaking Luna Park or something? I'll rip them apart with my own hands. Pauly, Pauly, take it easy. Nobody's killing anybody, get it? I want you to teach them a lesson. Break every bone in their bodies and leave them laying in a pool of their own blood. Make sure those bastards need wheelchairs. Little kids will laugh at their busted faces. Let everybody see what happens when somebody trashes my territory. Sounds interesting, boss. That ain't a bad idea at all. We'll need to find out where they're located. Big Biff might know something. He's always standing around in Chinatown. Go find him and ask him. No problem, boss. What are you trying to pull here? I'm trying to kick your ass out of this part of town. You guys are mafia, Johnny. Let's hit the road. Oh, shit. Quick, get to the car! We gotta get him! Go and nail him! You can't feel sorry for these animals. He shoot you in the back the first opportunity he gets. I thought about what my mother or Sarah would do if they saw me there. This one's finished. One less to worry about. Why are you standing there with that look on your face? Remember? Those guys wanted to do your girl yesterday. You better get used to it. Your last mission didn't exactly work out, Tom. Your killing everybody means a lot of problems for us. They tried to rape Sarah. The cops ought to thank me. I know, but the one you let get away will make trouble. What? We didn't let anybody get away. They're all dead. One lived. They pulled him out of the car wreck. Shit. The one you killed was the son of a city councilor, the mayor's friend, and Morello's accomplice. And the one who lived will go crying to the counselor. Daddy didn't exactly love his son, but in these cases, a person can remember a lot of good things. By the way, his funeral's today. Pity I can't make it. You're lucky that second one didn't know who you were and couldn't give you up. But that's not why I sent for you. Tom, I have quite a delicate job for you today. Come on, let's get in the car. An owner of one of the businesses which the Don has invested a lot of money in has suddenly decided to forget his obligation. And he has taken up with Mr. Morello. It seems that Morello is trying to test our limits. We're not going to play his game. So what's going down? We're going to blow the place up. What? What kind of joint is it? A hotel. 
Yeah, that is, it's a brothel, Tom. But no regular who house. It's a place for classy society types. And I have to knock them all off? Of course not. We'll just liquidate the owner and blow up his office. That should be enough of a warning for the others. We means me, right, Frank? I take out the owner, and I blow up the hotel. Exactly. And there's one more thing. One of their girls is passing information about our activities to Morello. We'll need her eliminated, too. Frank, I have to kill a woman? Worst luck, huh? Here's a photo of her. She's cute. And she looks familiar. Are you certain this is her? Unfortunately, yes. Her big mouth has lost us a pile of money and some of our people. Why don't Polly or Sam do it? We know the place in and out. They'd be dead before they can get it together. Mm. So what's the plan? It's downtown, the Corleone Hotel. Find a boss and shoot him. You can do it in public. It'll be a warning. Then take care of the girl. The owner's office is on the top floor. Grab any documents and money you find there, and then set up the explosives. You won't have time for much else. This won't be no picnic. I know. But if we don't take care of this now, we are next in line. Maybe you're right. The weapon and explosives are here in the car. Tom, good luck. What are you doing? What's going on? What, what are you going to do? What do you want from me? I'm sorry, Michelle, but I heard that a bunch of people got knocked off because of your talk and someone lost a lot of dough. You're dangerous to us. It, it isn't true. It couldn't be true. Tom, wait! I, I didn't know I'd hurt anyone. I, I wanted to help my brother and... He I knew it. This could only happen to me, a total screw-up. I can't just kill a young girl. A young naive fool who wanted to help him. her own brother? Probably a real bastard. I just On the other hand, my own worth getting killed over it? Get dressed, and get out. Thank you. This place is gonna blow in a little while. I don't want to see you in this town again. Nobody can see you here anymore. Thank you so very much. In this town, you're dead. Go away and never show your face here again. Get it? I promise. You will never hear about me again. <laughs> Just regular work. and was taken from us unexpectedly. The Lord awaits his flock with opened arms, and those such as Billy are awaited in the heavenly realm. Billy was a good son, brother, and friend. We will all remember him in that light, and pray for his salvation, since he did so much good. And now Billy's friend, 
who was with him during the last moments of his short life on this earth, would like to say a few words. Come, my son. Thank you, Father. You know, I, I wanted to pay my respects to Bill today and to tell him that I considered him as my own brother, that his death was a great loss for me. Huh? What? Are, I was that present is, at his death and... How? That's the one! And that's the bastard who killed Billy! Get him! Carlo! See you in hell, you rat. Don't move! Get down, Fada! Oh, it is only I. My son, don't shoot. I am unarmed. What have you done, my son? Such suffering for nothing. God is forgiving, but this is terrible. Don't you know murder is the greatest sin? I know, Father. But somehow everything got fouled up. I made a mistake somewhere. So many people have died without reason. They could have done much more with their lives. Father, these people were criminals. Cheats. Murderers. The one lying in the front wanted to rape my girl. Maybe God wanted it this way. A lot of people will have an easier life because of this. Yes, the Lord works in mysterious ways. But what about you? You can look yourself in the face? Your hands are stained with blood that you'll never wash off. I know that, Father. Look around you. Such a waste. We'll have to consecrate the church again. Everything is shot up. I can't let my parishioners in here. What am I going to do? Maybe this'll help? Pray for my soul, Father. I'll need it. I will, my son. I certainly will. By the way, Father, your little speech about Billy, I'm wondering about your conscience. Billy wasn't such a good person, and he didn't do good when he was alive. You must be joking, right? How could you get through this? Now it was really bad. Billy's pop, the councilman, wasn't very happy with us. And he was in bed with Morello's. Without the Mafia's help, he wouldn't have got his seat. He also started to mobilize the police. So we now had both the mob and the police against us. Aw, oh, come on. Hey, both sides benefited from it. The police could look good in the fight against crime, and at the same time get fat payoffs from Morello, who they left alone. And with the help of the police, Morello could eliminate his greatest competitor. An ideal situation. And things were going bad for us. Salieri lost a bundle. And I wasn't doing too good after all that killing. It started to seem that there was no point to anything. That I should enjoy everything as much as possible and quickly, while I still had the chance. When it's so easy to lose your life. Maybe that's why Paulie and me started drinking. You weren't falling apart, maybe. My life was just a trail of murders, crimes, and alcohol. If Frank hadn't helped me out, I would have ended up worse. It was weird. But suddenly he came to me and wanted to help. Could you give me a ride home, Tommy? Sure, Frank, get in. So how's life, Tommy? Yeah, going okay. Just... Uh, just... Ah, nothing. I heard you and Paulie are living it up. You two are getting pretty well known around town. Just something to do with the money. If you don't want to end up a wreck, Tommy, find some meaning in your life. What? You want to preach to me about a sense of life? I've seen a few good guys who couldn't deal with their problems, and they end up real bad. Usually somebody knocks you off for your money, or maybe you go nuts and all your buddies and pretty dames disappear. Anyway, the Don doesn't want drunks with trembling hands working for him. Those kind of people just bring problems. If you don't watch out, the next thing you know, your best friend kills you without blinking an eye. 
What should I do then? Come on, be yourself. Maybe invest the dough in some kind of investment. I could give you a few tips. Give up the party and go to the races with the Don on Sundays. Try taking a dame to the theater or at least the movies. There's a lot of things you can do. And who should I take, Frank? A decent girl doesn't want to kill her. You know, a policeman will murder to uphold the law. You enforce our laws. It's the same thing, we're just on the other side of the fence. You're not a murderer, Tom. But still, your wife mustn't interfere with your business. Remember, never take the job home, it just brings trouble. And where would I find a woman for me, Frank? I thought that you had something with Luigi's daughter, Sarah. I think she's a wonderful girl. But you alone know best how far it'll go with her. I'm not going to endanger somebody like Sarah, Frank. One day, Frank asked me to stop by the bar. He said he had a little job for me, so of course I showed up. Tom, we got two trucks full of the best liquor coming in from Canada. Sam's gone out to the handoff point to meet him. They're in an old farm outside of town, and we need to get the shipment to the city. I'm sending two trucks out. Paulie's going with one of them. I want you to go with them and keep an eye over everything. Just to make sure it all goes smoothly. Get a car from Ralphie and join up with Paulie over at our warehouse. Paulie will give you some weapons when you get there. Okay, Frank. Hey, Tommy. We're going to a farm outside of town to pick up a couple of truckloads of good booze. We want you with us in case of any trouble, but it should be real easy. You don't really have to do nothing. Just be there. The boys will load up the trucks and we'll come back. Sam's already there waiting for us, so he'll probably be drinking more soup before we even get there. I'll do the driving. Cops have been paid off, so there's nothing to worry about. Looks like I could have just stayed home and slept. Hey, if I gotta be up, you gotta be up. <laughs> Let's go. Countryside, stress. You know, we ought to do this more often. Better in the daytime. <laughs> I think you'd rather be with Luigi's little girl. Sarah, right? That's your night shift. <laughs> Lay off. What do you know about it? Same way as everybody else knows. Heck, even Luigi knows you're chasing her. I figure you ain't too bothered. You saved the virginity after all. <laughs> I bet you stole the right back, huh? Shut up, Polly. I didn't know you were there. Nah, come on, Tom. I'm kidding. She's a good girl. You're good for each other. I ain't so sure. Uh, somehow I can't imagine coming home and saying, Guess what, Sarah? Had a hell of a day at work today. I had to kill ten people. You can't talk about stuff like that at home. If you don't act like the way they describe you in the papers, and you're good to her, just ignore all that crap. Hey, <laughs> she's loaded. So it seems normal to you to hide who you really are from your own wife your whole life. Don't worry so much. Damn it. What's going on? Sam should be waiting here, but he isn't. It smells fishy. Look, we'll wait here with the trucks. You go quietly, check out what's going on. Thanks for the confidence. Here's some toys to take with you. Jesus! Hey, your friend, he's fallen sick. Who are you? Are you from the police? Yeah, Mr. Morello and the sheriff would like to send their regards and inform you that from this point on, they'll be taking over your duties here. <laughs> Christ, that was a massacre! 
This is one hell of a night. It looks like they want to get us completely out of the picture. Yeah? Well, that ain't gonna be so easy. Is Sam okay upstairs? Yeah, he's okay. At least he isn't any worse. Okay, I'll get him. You keep watch here. Sam, it's me, Paulie! Come on, we're going home. Oh. <laughs> we're going to the doctor. I ain't feeling so good. I must be coming down or something. Hmm, I guess so. Your nose is running a little. Ah. Sam, I'll put you in the back. Tom will be with you, just in case. Okay. Tom, go with him. And keep an eye out. There's a Thompson if you need it. Got it. Holy. It looks like we got more company. There's a Thompson and some ammo back there. Get behind those crates and watch out. Fire as soon as they get behind us. Make sure they don't get past us. We're here. Tom, get Sam ready. I'll go wake the doc up. Sam, we're at the doctor. God, is that you, Polly? What are you doing there so late? Good evening, doc. I'm sorry, but we had an accident, and we need your help. Okay, where is he? Bring him inside. Okay. That was our doctor. Doesn't ask questions. But Sam's in good company. Are you sure that he isn't just an untrained butcher? Definitely not. He's the best. The best paid doctor in the city. If you get hurt, you'll be thankful that we have him. Okay. I hope he'll do his best for Sam. At least that's all over. We could have all ended up a lot worse off than Sam did. When I catch that bastard who double-crossed us, I'll tear his head off. It looks like someone has had enough of us. It sure does. I don't know about you, but I'm going to get a shadow of something. When the Don finds out what happened, there'll be hell to pay. This means a real war, and it ain't good. It certainly ain't. All right. So good night, Tom. Have a good night. Or at least try to have one. Yesterday was the worst disaster we've had. We lost eight men, the whole shipment. And Sam can't even stand up. This is a war, and we're in a hell of a fix. He's already got the prosecutor on his side. And he's digging up a load of dirt on us. He's also pretty close to the counselor whose boy you knocked off, Tommy. So he's got the cops after us. They ain't got nothing on us. That's where you're wrong. Yesterday, Frank handed over all our account books. The prosecutor is having a field day. Damn it. Frank wouldn't be out for blood. But he doesn't seem to mind too much if I go to jail for life. Those account books will give the prosecutor a truckload of evidence for the case against us. But without Frank... It'll be for nothing. We've got to liquidate Frank. You mean hit him? You trying to tell me I've got to knock Frank off? More than 20 years I've known Frank. All I got, I got with him. But Frank broke the Omerta. I don't know why, but he must have his reasons. And we've got our own reasons to rub him out and get those books back. Otherwise, We'll do time. And plenty of it. Whatever you want, boss. If there ain't no other way... There isn't. I figure today's our last chance to do something before they move Frank out of our reach. What do you want me to do? First, find these men and find out where they've got Frank. They're good stoolies. They have connections with the cops and in the courthouse. One of them is sure to know. 
You already know, big biffs from Chinatown, and little Tony's always loafing on the island near the museum. Then, track down Frank. Whatever you do, don't kill him till he tells you where those books are. Kabish? Got it. Frank's going to have protection. You'll have to knock them off first. Once you know where the books are, kill him. Okay, boss. Whatever you want. Good luck, Tommy. Get a gun from Vincenzo and a car off Ralphie. And remember, if you don't do this right, we're done for. God damn it. What have you done, Frank? You were a brother to me. Tom. Frank, the Don sent me. And you know why. I know why. I know. I don't get what happened to you. I thought you were my friend. I'd have never guessed that something like this would happen. Why the hell did you do it? Tom, I couldn't go on this way. Too many people have died lately, and I, I don't have the stomach for it. it. Used to be different with the Don in the old days. Maybe I'm just getting too old. Tom, this is a war and I don't want to fight anymore. I, I got a child and I, I thought I'd finally get some peace. You couldn't have done this some other way? You didn't have to sell us out. They came for me and I had to surrender. They have my wife and daughter, Tom. If I don't give them the books, they'll kill them. Before, we used to solve things like men. You, Paul, or Sam would get them back. But I can't take that risk this time. I don't want to lose them, Tom. I can't live without them. They told me if I did what they wanted, they'd release them and send us to Europe. Where we'd start again. Cops? The cops are blackmailing you and want to kill your family? Ever since you and Paulie killed that Billy kid? The cops and Morello have been working hand in hand. The counselor? The kid's father. Got where he is thanks to Morello. Morello wanted to get me to talk, and the police would then liquidate the Don. Both sides would then get what they wanted. I'm afraid this situation has changed somewhat. Where are the books, Frank? I haven't got them, Tom. You handed them over already? No. No, Tom. I'll tell you where they are if you get my wife and daughter back. We were supposed to wait here at the airport, so they must be holding them somewhere around here. Tell me after if you want. Just make sure they get out of this city alive. Fine. But you'll have to give me those books first, Frank. Sorry, but they're in case you're lying. Daddy! Frank! Marsh! Oh, good Alice! Thank God you're all right. Darling. Thanks, Tom. They promised they'd give me plane tickets when I gave them the books. Those tickets must be here somewhere. Could you try to find them? Okay, I'll do that, Frank. Wait here for me. I hope you ain't planning no funny business. Here you go, Frank. Thanks, Tom. Let me say goodbye to March and Alice, and then we'll sort out this what? business. What? Frank, you want flying with us? What? I can't. What? Watch. Tommy and I have a very serious situation here that we must sort out. Right, Tom? Frank, just tell me where the books are and go with them. What? How would you explain it to the Don? Forget about it. That's my problem. Where are the books? I'll never forget this. Here's the key to a safe box in the First National Bank downtown. The books are there. Take it, Tom. Thanks. And Tom... Thanks for everything you've done for us. I'm indebted to you. And tell the Don I'm sorry for the way things had to end.
To the Don, you're dead, Frank. If he finds out you're not, then this isn't finished. Now just go. Tommy, I'll never forget how you helped us. God bless you. Goodbye, mister! And, uh, don't forget what I told you in the car that time. In the end, your best friend kills you. Frank told me that in the car. And now, it was me who was meant to kill a friend. Only I didn't do it. Don't do to others what you wouldn't want them to do to you, or however they say it. And I didn't want Polly to knock me off anytime soon. <laughs> I may have given him a reason to do just that today. I brought it on myself. I just hope he likes me as much as I like Frank. Luckily, everybody bought that Frank was dead and that I had disposed of his body. So Frank's funeral took place without Frank. The Mafia has a habit of organizing grand funerals for important people, where they forget the unfinished business they have with each other, or with the dead. The deceased are only shown in a good light. It's the principle of every gangster, at least at a funeral. So it happened that not only Salieri and our people made long speeches about their best friend Frank, but even Morello and other gangsters. Morello and Salieri cried on each other's shoulders. It didn't seem like they had been at each other's throats only the day before. Frank would have been spinning in his grave had he actually been dead. I guess everything turned out pretty well, only I had to think up something about Frank's family. Salieri, of course, wanted to help out his best friend's poor widow till the end of her days. I couldn't let him know that they were really resting comfortably in Europe at that moment. Tommy, it seems our problems aren't over. The prosecutor who nearly got Frank against us is digging up more dirt, and I've heard he even has witnesses. It looks like that counselor whose son you shot is sorely craving revenge. The prosecutor is a good friend of his, and if we don't nip it in the bud, they'll make big problems for us. That doesn't sound too good. What's even worse is that guy doesn't trust anyone. He has all the evidence against us in a safe at his villa. Sam and Polly are taking care of the witnesses right now as we speak. And you've got to get that evidence, Tom. How will we get to it? Well, today we have an excellent opportunity. Mr. Prosecutor has decided to go to the theater, and nobody else will be home. That is, nobody apart from the home security, of course. But his study will be empty. His villa is in the millionaire's quarter. Mr. Prosecutor isn't exactly a poor boy. Thanks, Luigi. Your only concern is how to get in. But there'll be guards around the villa. Once inside, you should be fine. The villa will be empty. The prosecutor's office is on the first floor, and there should be a safe in the wall. For that, you'll have Salvatore with you. That's a guy who manages to open every safe in America. Once you've got all the evidence, leave, before the prosecutor arrives back home. Okay, boss. Where can I find this Salvatore? He'll be waiting for you down in Hoboken on the corner next to the stadium. So you can pick him up on the way there. I don't have to tell you how important this job is to us, Tommy. Buona fortuna. I'll do my best, boss. And Tommy. If you happen to bump into the prosecutor, don't kill him, no matter what. It'll just bring us more problems. You can depend on it, boss. So show me what you can do, Salvatore. Okay, Chief.
Christ. It looks like we better get out fast, Salvatore. Got it, Chief. Piece of cake. Well done, boys. The last job went fine. There's no evidence or witnesses left against us. Thanks to your persuasive methods, they won't even squeak. Thanks, boss. We try to make you happy. <laughs> well, you certainly did. But today we're here for something else. Paulie has a pretty interesting proposal. Well, I met a guy from Kentucky, William Gates. Everyone knows that Kentucky makes the best homebrew whiskey. Well, anyway, this guy almost threw up when he tried the whiskey which Morello sells here. When he gave me a drink of this stuff, they brew back there, forget about it. I won't drink anything else. So I asked him about it, right? He said it was no problem and that he could deliver me as much as I wanted. You know, I got jazz thinking about the dough we'd make on it. Well, I ordered a truckload of it. I said to myself, if it catches on here, we can make a bigger deal later. It would certainly be a good replacement for the loss of our Canadian. I like it. Nice one. Me too. So we're gonna pick up some beautiful booze. I'm already looking forward to it. Where they hiding it? They'll meet us in the big parking garage. We have to be more careful than we were before. You'll get to the place by car with two other boys. They'll be your escort on the way back. You three pick up the truck and take it to our warehouse in Hoboken. The boys are already out in the yard waiting in the car. And bring me back a bottle so I can finally drink something decent. Count on it, boss. Get in. We're going for some medicine. Here, Tom. This might come in useful. Thanks. Wait for us here, boys. We'll be back in a little while. When we drive out, follow after us. Then, we'll have a shot at the warehouse. Sure, boss. Hey there, Bill. It's good to see you again. Hey, Polly. These are my partners are good friends. They like the idea of working together. And they also like first-rate whiskey, which sure certainly is. That it is. The main thing is that Don Salieri likes it too. And since he's financing the whole deal, he's your first payment for the goods. Give Mr. Salieri my regards. I'm always happy to do business with people like him. You should be, Bill. You could hit it big with this. If this small delivery works out for us, we'll order a lot more next time. Take cover! What's going on? Jesus, who are they? Fire! Kill the bastards! Damn! So it looks like Morello got in the way of things again, boss. We can't seem to shake off this bad luck. Boys, you won't believe this, but it's completely the other way around. The only one who really had bad luck this time was Morello. What? I found out who our Mr. Gates really was. And? Gates was never really from Kentucky. He was a small-time thief who stole the goods from Morello and wanted to sell them to us. Morello doesn't think that he almost stopped our deal, but that we pinched a truckload of his most expensive whiskey. I bet that bastard's happy now. Unbelievable! Well, that worked out just fine. 
Let's drink to that. To another success, boys. Salute. The end of Prohibition in 33. You probably weren't too happy, huh? Nah, the end of the good old days. Yeah, not too happy, but it wasn't all bad. Eventually, I did get married to Sarah and had a daughter. It was a good time. But life went on in business. We made a huge amount of dough during Prohibition, which we invested into new deals. A lot of them were legitimate. We had regular firms like construction, transport, restaurants. We ran labor unions. And of course, there was gambling, betting, the lotteries. We actually did really well. We just tried to stay out of drugs, even if it wasn't always easy. Come on, business is business, right? You're way off there. The Cousin Nostra ain't no patties a Chinaman. With drugs comes big money and even bigger problems. When someone has a problem with the cops because of drugs, he does the sensible thing. He admits it. If his family catches him, they rub him out. Drugs are taboo. So what? There's some kind of grand poobah passing judgment? Something like that. The leading families choose a boss of bosses. They sort out the big problems and set the rules of the game. So, criminals who break the law have their own courts that judge them? That's just great. Laws aren't changeless holy words. Every country in the world has their own. It's just somebody with a lot of power applying their own will. It depends on the person whether they'll serve someone else blindly or apply their own will. Why should the Don be restrained? The Mafia prevailed through prohibition with its own laws. A handful of poor, uneducated immigrants from Sicily were stronger than all the laws, courts, and police here in the States. That took some doing. What? With murder? With the suffering they caused? Come on. You think that the Mafia just murders innocent people? The Mafia punishes those who break laws. And the majority of your laws, too. Unfortunately, we can't put anyone in jail or fine them. Everybody who comes and works for us knows what to expect if he breaks the rules. People lie and steal, and there are lots of criminals here who get unbelievable pleasure when they steal from the mob. As well as the mafiosos who get pleasure from cheating the state. And what about all the payoffs, robberies and raids, huh? Hey, the cops ain't no saints, neither. No Don encourages his men to go around harming people. And what other people do on their own isn't our concern. And as for payoffs, most people come to the Don for help and advice on their own. And they'll pay gladly for it. The Don is an esteemed person. But not every Don is like Salieri. That's the truth. There you go. Your system works, but you know why? Because you're a bunch of selfish murderers. And you only care about your own gain. All your efforts are spent ensuring that you live like pigs in shit. That's why you're so successful. You're only looking out for yourselves. We look out after everybody. A few cops have to ensure law and order for all, and that's a much harder job. That's true. But you can easily leave the Don outside your protection. He'll watch his own back. And what about you? What are you sitting here for? Ah, Tommy. I'm glad you're here. I was afraid I'd miss you. Hey, boss. What's going on? There's something I've been looking forward to all week. I'm going to Pepe's restaurant for lunch, but my personal bodyguard has called in sick. There's nobody here who could take me, and I prefer not to go to these things alone. You'll take me, won't you? Certainly, boss. Bravo. Let's get going, then. I'm already pretty hungry. Have you got a piece on you, Tommy? Yeah, I got one. You think I'll need it? Well, <laughs> probably not. But it's better to be sure. You know how it is. 
We'll take my car. At last, I could eat a horse. Hey, Don Serieri, welcome! Happy. You don't even know how much I'm looking forward to your specialties. Fantastic meal, Peppy. I haven't eaten that well in a long time. Molto grazie, Don. Praise it from a gourmet like you always are making me feel it with joy. Oh, please, I'm no gourmet. If you knew what I ate for dinner yesterday, you definitely wouldn't say that. <laughs> Can I get you anything else, Adana? I have an excellent Chianti. Really? Let's get it out here then, Peppy. At once, sir. How'd you like it, Tommy? It was fantastic, boss. I'll have to bring Sarah here sometime. Ah, yes. You certainly should, Tommy. Just be careful that Sarah doesn't take offense. She cooks worse than Peppy. <laughs> What the hell is going on? This is ruining my lunch. Gorilla must have nothing better to do. They could have at least let me taste the wine, Gabones. Let's get this over with. <laughs> Throw him his present, Joe. Maybe we'll smoke him out. Working for you is real interesting, boss. What'd you say? My ears are ringing from that blast. Yes, boss. It looks like we won't get out this way. Try and run around the back of them, while I keep them entertained. Yes, boss. Be careful. I have to say, you got balls, Tommy. You saved my ass. You weren't so bad yourself, boss. Christ, that was crazy. Thank God Pepe hid. Poor guy. I'll have to send him some dough for repairs. You should. Boss, I'd like to know how they knew where we were. You think they followed us? I don't think so, Tommy. I have a feeling I know who set me up. Who? Carlo, my bodyguard. That goddamn son of a bitch, he's the only one who knew where I was going. And he also excused himself from work today. He knew very well what was gonna happen. That sounds pretty likely. Yeah, I think so. I'll tear him apart like a ragdoll. Carlo lives in a rented house in Little Italy, a little way from our bar. There's a pizzeria downstairs. We're going. You know what, boss? What? That's the first time I knocked someone off in their underpants. It's nothing. First time for me, too. There's a first time for everything. Well, who do we have here? How are you, Sergio? Staying out of trouble? I see you got a new punching bag. Well, the gentleman here thinks that the financing of our labor union ain't fair, and he wants to strike. I've always said a strike is a bad thing. Real bad. Unless, of course, it's organized by my dear brother for a higher goal. You won't get away with this. The boys will show you. I think you're overestimating their bravery. You cockroach. I didn't come for this discussion, unfortunately. We'd like to introduce you to some of our principles about labor unions in this free country of ours. Carry on, boys! What's the reason for your coming, brother? Salieri is alive. What? How could he survive? I'm afraid in the current situation Bastard. we can't ask him. Burn it and there is nobody else who could tell us what happened. Our guys are dead and the customers at the restaurant are dead. And that sneak Carlo is as well. Could you please shut up? 
We're trying to talk here! Go to That's hell! There's no way to talk to Mr. Morello! Bum! God, he should have been there alone. How could that old man kill so many of our guys? He's as old as me, so I wouldn't say that. But he probably wasn't there alone. I think he'll be planning how to get rid of us right now. What shall we do? I will try to figure out something. Anyway, be careful. Now his best guys will be after us. So, we're really at war? We have been for a long time already. But now, more than ever before. Take good care of yourself, brother. Boss, it looks like he's had enough. What do you want us to do with him? I don't know. Finish him off and dump him in the ocean. Tommy, that assassination attempt means that Morello has openly declared war on us. We have to deal with him. If Morello didn't have accomplices with the politicians and other important city organizations, our forces would be nearly equal. If we liquidate those people, our opponent will be a lot weaker. That's exactly what we gotta do. Eliminate his strong contacts. Right. And as we all know, an all-out war must be avoided. Get the generals. Then the soldiers will give up without a fight. So this is what we'll do. We'll finish them off one by one. What do you mean exactly? The first in line is the city councilor who's caused us so much trouble. Morello got him into politics and that makes him a big supporter. We'll take care of him after the boy. And I mean today. The councilor is celebrating his birthday and has decided to throw a huge shindig. He's having it on a steamboat with fireworks and the whole nine, and he'll be making a speech to the paparazzi. There'll be a lot of people there who won't do dick against us when they see what happens to him. It sounds pretty risky. But well worth the risk. Vincenzo knows the plan. Okay. As I said, it's on a steamboat. It won't be easy to get in without an invite, but I know you can do it, Tom. Above all, try not to raise suspicions before we reach our goal. Of course, you won't get a weapon past the security, but I've dealt with that already. As soon as you get on deck, go to one of the men's rooms. There'll be a small revolver hidden there. Afterwards, just wait outside a while. The counselor will probably be hiding in his cabin, but he'll be out for the start of the celebration in his speech. That's your big shot. During the speech, you're gonna pop him, Tom. It's got to be in public, and this speech is the best opportunity. There'll be a big crowd there, so you can blend in with it once this thing is all done. And then what? I'd like to get back to shore in one piece. Afterwards, it'll be nuts. There'll be some security guards on the boat, and you should be able to get past them in the chaos. If not, get to the bow, and Paulie will pull up in a boat and bring you back safely. So what, Tommy? It won't be a picnic, but you should pull it off. Okay. I'll do it. The boat is anchored on the waterfront on Central Island. You better get going or you'll miss it. Keep an eye on the time. Buona fortuna, Tom. Hello there, John. I hope you're enjoying yourself. Good evening. Yes, it's lovely here. How are you? I hope you like it. Thanks. We're glad to hey, be here. I'm glad you could make it. It's wonderful. Thank you. Tommy pulled it off. Now all the politicians in the city are scared. Nobody wants to end up like the counselor. Nice job, Tom. But it's not enough. Now we're after Morello's right-hand man, his brother, Sergio Morello Jr. 
He controls the unions in the city. His biggest assets are the dockers' unions, thanks to whom he practically controls every import into the city. We kill him, and a big part of Morello income is gone. I think I know how we'll do it, boss. Sergio is usually at the Italian Garden restaurant. There's a telephone in the restaurant, and across the street a phone booth. You go to the booth and call inside the restaurant, saying you want to speak to Sergio. I'll be standing in front of the restaurant with a Thompson. And as soon as Sergio gets to the phone, I'll waste him. Then we just gotta get to the car and make a quick getaway. What do you say? Yeah, I suppose I can handle the calling part. Get to it, boys. Vincenzo will give you your weapons. Yeah? Mr. Morello, please. Hang on. Buddy, Marissa Morello ain't here today. That's right. Oh, 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 Jesus, oh, oh, oh. It isn't him! Polly, move it! Morello isn't there! Don't worry about it, Tommy. It happens to everybody sometimes. Vincenzo and me have thought up a new plan. Biff told us that Sergio has a mistress who he spends a lot of time with. He must be there today. Vincenzo has put together a little surprise for him. All we gotta do is put it on his car while he's inside enjoying himself. That's right. All you gotta do is put this bar right under his car. Then you can just enjoy the show. Sergio usually leaves at four, so hurry. This time it has got to work. His mistress lives in a house in Oakwood. We'll know he's there if his expensive little sports car's parked out in front. Stick the bomb under it. That sounds a lot better. I'll get going. Christ! No, no, no! Hey, stop! Shit! Damn. That's one hot dame. That girl, it came out and sat down in the car. I don't know, maybe he lent it to her or something. It just happens sometimes. There's nothing you could do. Put it simply, we gotta get this guy. Sergio meets with his bookie downtown in the parking lot of the Rainbow Garden restaurant. Get Paulie down there to fill him full of holes. You'll just drive, Tom. Then get away fast before the alarm goes out. Now I'll catch that bastard, I promise. He'll be gone, and they won't even know how I did it. Now get a move on so you can still catch Sergio there. What the? We have a message from Mr. Salieri. What the hell's going on? Oh, no. Well, that certainly changes the situation, gentlemen. Kill that clown! After so many foul-ups, Salieri gave the job to other people. I only went with them as kind of an insurance policy. Just sit here and watch, so you don't screw up again.
Amateur. Don't the barriers close? Staring at kill that bastard tail with me. Okay, come on out, you bastard. That didn't work, huh? I don't know what you're trying, you bastard. My brother will kill you along with your whole family. Give it up. You're dead. You won't get in here, you idiot. You're too small for me. Hey, you hear? Lucky bastard. It was a tough job, but we finally have Morello where we want him. Now one last step remains. Eliminate him. In his sections of the city, there's theft, robbery, blackmail, illegal lotteries, gaming rooms, and whorehouses appearing all the time. But what's the biggest problem? Drugs? Horseshit. The problem is that we don't get a cent out of it. 
That'll change as soon as we get rid of Morello. His organization will collapse, and all those small-time cheats, thieves, and criminals will kill each other without anybody over there to maintain order. Today, we can finally remove that bastard once and for all. Paulie has come up with a plan. That's right. What my informants tell me, we have one chance to get this guy. Merlo watches his back and almost never shows himself in public. He goes everywhere in his bulletproof limo, clammed up like some seashell. But today he's coming out. He's going to theater to do some socializing with the creme de la creme of Lost Heaven. And we'll be there to show him something too. Isn't this a bit risky? It's risky, but this is our only opportunity to waste him in public and show everyone our power. We'll do it like this. Wait in front of the building till the end of the show. People will start coming out, so there'll be a lot of confusion. With Morello trying to make his way out, his gorillas won't have much of a chance to notice us before we hit him. Make sure you don't draw any attention to yourselves, so no shooting. Pull your weapons when you see him. I hope I still recognize him. Shouldn't be hard. Well likes to wear his white suits. Not many people wear them these days. Each of you get a Thompson or Lupara from Vincenzo. Wait out in front of the theater on Central Island until Morello comes out. Then go to it. The performance ends at 9 o'clock, so make sure you're there on time. It should work out fine, so don't come back without his head. Okay, boss. Let's get to it. Sam, shoot! Bastards! Kill him, Sam! Damn it, Polly! Wow. Yes! Yes! How did you fix the car? Better ask Sam. Why ain't you a mechanic, Sam? That works too dirty for me. So... You killed Morello. That must have felt good, huh? We celebrated. Salieri was thrilled, of course. It ran the whole town, practically. And there seemed to be an end to the bloodshed. For a while, I felt like a king. Until I came to a realization. If a regular guy like me could kill the most powerful man in the city, what good was all his power? Hell, if he hadn't been so powerful, he'd probably still be alive. It seemed to me that no matter how strong someone was, there was always somebody stronger to take them out. So where did that intuitive thought take you? Greediness is bullshit. When you have no money, you think that a few bucks a month will be enough. Then you realize that it wouldn't be bad to have a nice car. You'd get a great job in some high up position, but in actuality, you're thinking about going higher. Before you know it, you want to be the President of the United States, and you want to win the war against the Germans. Luckily, that won't happen. Plus, the whole strategy of watching other people's backs has one basic flaw. The whole time you have to watch your own back, in case someone else has the same idea. So I thought to myself, that maybe I ought to change my priorities a little. Great Bible story. <laughs> <laughs> Laugh it up. You know where it got me in the end. This. Who is it? It's from 1920. The old man is Don Pepone. The two younger ones are Salieri and Morello. This photo convinced me that this kind of life is poisonous. Morello and Salieri were friends, and they were both commanders of Pepone's regime. But in the 1920s, they got Don Pepone killed because of some deal. Strangely enough, Salieri still admires the guy now. Afterward, they divided up the city, and each ruled their own part of it. But they started to compete with each other. I ended up being Salieri's instrument of death to kill his best friend, to save him from looking Morello in the eye. It occurred to me that my friends and the people I loved were the same. Someday I'd turn to Pauly and be looking straight down the barrel of a gun. I couldn't be sure of anybody, above or below me. But you were risking your life every day. Being a sharpshooter for the Mafia ain't no better roses the way you tell it. It's different when you're living it. When you're full of energy and you're fighting for your life with someone who's like your brother. You're just two soldiers who know what needs to be done. And it all depends on your ability to survive. It's a war. The constant feeling that you can't even trust your best friend is terrible. You are alone, and death can come from anywhere. 
I'd lie awake at night wondering if the joke my best friend told me was really just a joke, or if I should get prepared for my own execution. A person needs someone he can trust. That guy sickens me. He controls half of the brothels in the city, doesn't pay us a dime, and then has the nerve to say he's ending crime in the city. Of course, I wouldn't give a damn about what he says, but him and his whores are trying to expand even into our territory. I have a feeling it's time to finish his political career. With the election such a long way off, we'll have to remove him physically. I don't know, boss. Haven't we seen enough violence for a while? I just have a strange feeling about this. Tommy, we're on the verge of running this town. He's the only thing that's standing in our way. You want him knocked off in public like Morello? In public, yeah. But not like Morello. Remember that knocking off a politician is messier than offing a gangster. We don't want anyone to implicate us. The speculation and fear will be enough for our purposes. So, uh, how are we gonna do it? Mr. Sewer has a rally today in a park on a little isle off Central Island. There's only one escape route over a small bridge, and normally it would be a problem. But Vincenzo has an idea. He took a regular army rifle and put a telescopic sight on it. So, you should be able to hit him from a much greater distance. You won't even have to be on the island. Where then? You can get a beautiful view of him from Central Island, from the tower of the old abandoned prison on the north tip of the island. You'll have the whole park right in front of you. And with that rifle, it won't be difficult to take out your target without attracting too much attention. Well, that doesn't sound like a bad plan. Good. Talk to Vincenzo and get the rifle. Okay, boss. And remember, Tommy, you have to do it from a distance, and nobody must see you. You'll probably only get one shot at this. If you don't hit him immediately, they'll cover him and the job will be ruined. I got it, boss. Today's job is just for relaxation, boys. There's an import firm that brings in lots of luxury goods from around the world. Yesterday, another boatload of goods came into the harbor, and I have a taste for a few of the items on the list. What do they got that we don't have, sir? Well, I haven't smoked a decent cigar in a long time, and they have almost a ton of them. Cigars? Yeah, cigars. Something strange about that? Customers in our nightclubs are interested in good quality cigars, but they're expensive and difficult to get. If we manage to get a truck full of the best cigars, we could make as much money as we would off a bank job. What? Oh my God, just bring me a truckload. Paulie, explain it to them. Okay. It's like this. Paulie, what the hell is going on? How the hell would I know, Tommy? How did you snap a truck full of expensive cigars? The Don wants them and it makes us money. So it's up to us to get them. It just seems a bit small time for him. Forget about it, Tom. The cigars we gotta steal are packed in crates at the harbor. We need to get them to a truck and leave the harbor. But first, we have to get in. How do we do that? There's a tougher guard at the harbor now than when Morello was around. Exactly. Brute force won't work. So we're gonna play this one cool. We'll just nab one of the trucks while they're moving goods around the city. The trucks have signs on them that say Atlantic Import. We'll wait for one to come out of the harbor, follow it to a nice quiet place with no cops, then block its path. A few shots into the air or to get the driver out. Once we take his papers, one of us can get into the harbor. So we're gonna kill the poor bastard? Nah, it's too much hassle. So long as we get him out and get everything he's got on him. You'll take the truck to the harbor, Tommy. Load it up with the crates of cigars, and then we'll meet at the agreed place. I'll load them up alone, unload them alone, and then maybe I'll smoke a few. So what are you gonna do? 
We'll wait a little away from the harbor at the agreed place. If somebody starts tailing you, we'll deal with them. Then you take the truck to the handoff point. Yeah, right. How will I recognize these crates? We'll have a sign that says Scorsese Import-Export. And the agreed place? We'll go there and I'll show you. Yeah. First we'll go there, and then we'll get the truck. So let's go. Since we're all here, I want to ask you both something. What's on your mind? Well, I got this idea. I might need you to do a little job with me. Oh, yeah? What's the deal? Well, it's a big deal, actually. I can't manage it alone. You're my good buddies. We know each other, you know? And Salieri? You know about this? Nah. He doesn't, and he doesn't need to know. He's already got enough money. So, what's it all about? Well, I was checking out this bank. What? What? Cool it. It's okay. This bank isn't too secure. It's just a little joint. At the end of the month, they always have a big pile of money in the safe. We'd be pretty loaded if we pulled it off. Or we'd all be dead. What's the matter with you? Besides, we've got plenty of money. Bull, we ain't doing bad, but we sure aren't loaded. Salieri ain't a bad boss, but once in a while I like to make some decent dough on the side. Not some tiny share. Hmm. I'm not sure it's such a great plan, Polly. What do you say, Sam? Count me out. The family's pretty important to me. Yeah, right. You're probably right. Forget about it. I was just thinking out loud. Okay, good. Okay, I think it's time. I'll go get ready. I'll be back in a while. Tom, let's get to the hub. We did it! Good. Now we can finally see what's inside these crates. Good idea. Hope it didn't get damaged on the way. A few of them fell off. The cigars are smashed up. Well, it ain't so bad. This one's just bent. So we'll straighten it out. Damn! I messed that up. What the hell are you doing? What? I dropped a few things, nothing big. Hey, Box, what do you got inside? Christ! Tom, you ain't gonna believe this! What is it? What's inside those boxes? Damn, are you thinking what I'm thinking? Well, they don't look like cigars. And it's definitely not rock candy. Those are diamonds, and a hell of a lot of them. What if they're just phonies? You know, they exchange cigars for mirrors, props, beads, stuff like that. I think only Columbus got away with that. These look like diamonds, Tom. There's a hell of a lot of them. I knew Salieri wouldn't risk so much for some damn cigars. Well, it looks like you were right. What do you want to do? Should we take them? What? You think we'd get away with it? Well, we could say that some crates got lost in the chase. Or oh, you can forget that. That's bullshit. Put them back where you found them. I don't want to end up with a hole in my head. We just took one or two each, and there's so many. Holy okay, okay, I'll put them back. What if Salieri doesn't even know about them? I think we can easily find out if he knows. How? Sam's bringing him here right now. Come, we'll see firsthand if he knows. Bravo, boys. You did it. You got a well-deserved bonus coming your way. Ah, one crate got broke, but it's nothing. 
Looks like these ones at the back are okay. Bravo, bravo. Boss, should we unload the crates and put the cigars into the warehouse? Uh, no, no, not yet. Anyway, why should you do it? I can get someone else. You want to work at my warehouse, too? <laughs> now nah, go take it real easy, boys. Good work. Paulie? Huh? I'll stop by tomorrow and we can talk about that little deal you mentioned. Yeah. Okay. The next day, I went to Paulie's like we arranged. So what, Tom? What's with the sudden change of heart? I didn't think you wanted to do it. That was when I still thought that Salieri wasn't using us. Now I know that he is. Well, you're certainly right there. So would you do the bank? What about Sam? Hey, you heard him. He's worried about what might happen and the Don coming after us. So if you want to do it, it's just you and me. What do you have to say? First, I'd like to see this bank. Then I'll listen to your plan. Fine. We can go and look at it right now. Okay, let's go. Looks like it. So what now? We'll change our clothes so they won't pick us up on the street. Put the dough in the briefcase. Fine, then what? You don't say a word to anyone. Sleep on it. Stop by tomorrow and think about what we're gonna do with the dough. I'll take it with me, so Sam won't find it. You know? Just don't run off with it. Sure. I'll take off to Hawaii. <laughs> don't try it. I'd find you and stuff that metal-plated briefcase down your throat. I'm looking forward to it. <laughs> We hid the dough from the bank at Pauly's for the time being. We couldn't blow it all straight away, so we arranged that I'd stop by there the next day, and we'd think of the best way to invest it. I had loads of ideas of what to do with the money, but I was pretty curious about what Pauly's plans were. Oh, Jesus! What the hell happened? Pauly! Pauly! Christ! The dough! Where's the dough? Damn it! It's all gone! This is like a bad dream. Polly? Uh, Sam? It's, it's Tom. Polly's dead. I, uh, I... Christ! I knew it. Tom, you're in deep shit. I wanted to warn Polly. Salieri found out about the bank and decided he wasn't gonna tolerate it. I didn't make it in time. Tom, you gotta disappear fast. Sam, I, I, I didn't know it would be such a big deal. I... Well, what should I do? I can't just leave Sarah and the kid. Okay, okay, Tom, 
I'll help you. We gotta meet somewhere, but almost everywhere is dangerous for you now. Our best bet would be the city gallery. Okay, okay. I'll be there in a little while. I... thank you. You, you know Polly is lying here in a million pieces. I, I don't know who else I could turn to. It's okay. I still owe you one. Thanks, Sam. Don't move, scumbag! Oh, shit! Surprise! <laughs> you weren't looking for that at Paulie's, by chance. Sam, what's going on? I thought we were meeting alone. The situation's changed, Tom. I had to decide whose side I was on, and sorry, but it would be suicidal to stand on your side. I can live with murder, though. So you killed Polly? Well, I was more the means to his death. The same as I am in your case. I would never have expected this from you, Sam. Well, I'm in a good mood. Things are looking up for me, and I, well, I found a bag of money. So killing off your partners is a big laugh? Maybe I should try it. Hmm, it ain't bad. But you probably won't have time. It's never too late to start. I guess honor's out of the picture. Honor's meaningless. This is business, and you've broken its unwritten rules many times over, Tom. Maybe I feel some pity, but that's out of place in business. I didn't notice that I was the cause of the family's problems. Really? You did what you wanted, Tom. You didn't kill Frank. You let that whore get away and then the bank? You can't do what you know is right because you don't know nothing. You don't grasp the effects of your actions. The Don is the thinker. You were never a great thinker, so you probably need him. That's not how I feel. I can think for myself. The opinion of Don Cilieri is that he won't go and sit in jail just because of your feelings. And I agree with his opinion completely. Don Cilieri really liked you, Tom. And I did too. We'll cry together at the funeral. You poor bastard, Sam. I feel sorry for you. But I'm alive. It's a pity you can't use that money. Oh, but don't worry. We'll give Sarah a little something. You know, single mothers don't have it easy these days. The Don will take care of her. He isn't as much of a monster as you think. Goodbye, Tom. It was nice knowing you. Take good care of him, boys. And please, don't make him suffer. He's my buddy. As I see it, the boys underestimated you, Tom. Well, I hope they'll be luckier this time. Boys, be careful you don't break anything. There are lots of beautiful and valuable things in here. It looks like you underestimated your new partners. Maybe you ought to change sides. It's still not over, Tom. Things aren't what they look like, Sam. Salieri also double-crossed you. What are you talking about? We almost got killed because of those stupid cigars. Salieri knew that the job was risky. There were diamonds hidden between those cigars. He didn't want to give us a cut. That's why Paulie wanted to take the bank. Because he realized how Salieri was ripping us off. He told me about those diamonds, Tom. He only wanted to keep them secret so nobody knew where they were before he sold them. Besides, the diamonds have nothing to do with the fact that you didn't kill Frank! He broke the Omerta. Which is worse, Tom. How do you know I didn't kill Frank? You can blame it all on someone else you didn't kill. You're too human. She came back to the city and we found her by accident. Damn it. Tom, 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 you know you can't trust the dame. I can understand it isn't easy to kill your wife's best friend. Yeah, I should have done it for you. <laughs>
she also pleaded with me and cried. Uh, well, we realized that we couldn't rely on you, so we checked up a little and found out about Frank. Sam, do you really think everything has to end like this? We still got a chance. There ain't no way back now, Tom. I'm sorry. Ow! <clears throat> Hey, it's the same situation again, Tom. And once again, you can't decide. Damn it. <clears throat> oh. Mm. You did it! But they'll get you all the same. Salieri will get you. He stood by you. You rat. You're dangerous, Tom. And Paulie <laughs> is dead. He was never, never sure that you would, wouldn't forgive his death. Oh, you're gonna have to hide like an outcast. And w one day they'll get you all the same. <laughs> like Frank. They found him? You only le lengthened his life. But in the end, they found him. All the same. And Frank was the Don's only real friend. Friendship ain't worth shit. <laughs> oh, God. Ah, oh. Oh. So it was you again, huh? You destroyed the picture collection? Worth a few million dollars? I wasn't planning on it, but somehow it worked out that way. Otherwise, that's everything? I got out of there fast. It was no picnic. I really was in danger, but I pulled it off. I took the wife and daughter and immediately left the country. Sam was right. If they decided to find Frank in Europe and take revenge almost five years after he disappeared, they wouldn't let me just leave after betraying them. And you're willing to say all that you've now said to me in front of a court? To give evidence against all those men? Don't you think the situation will be a lot worse for you? What you're planning to do now isn't betrayal. It's more like treason. If these people go to jail, or better yet, death row, they won't be able to take revenge on me. At least not as easily as if they were free. I am willing to give evidence against them if you ensure our protection and after the trial a new identity for me, my wife, and my daughter. If we manage to pull it off, it will be the biggest legal battle this country's ever seen. It's an interesting offer. And I don't know if it's moral to help somebody like you, but I think the results will be worth it. I think we'll help you. Everything worked out until the legal case. I sat in my cell and wrote down the evidence I had against all the people I had worked with. People I had been friends with for ten years. The case was huge and caused a shock throughout the country. Salieri got life. Even some of his thugs got the chair. The shorter sentence was eight years. 
I spent the whole time in a closed cell at a secret location, with no visitors. I didn't see Sarah or my little girl the entire time. In the end, it was worth it. Norman got us new identities and moved us to the other end of the U.S. I got work as a driver for a respectable company. We started a whole new life. This peace was only interrupted by the war, but we got through it. Mr. Angelo? Uh, yes? Mr. Salieri sends his regards. You know, the world isn't run by the laws written on paper. It's run by people. Some according to laws, others not. It depends on each individual how his world will be, how he makes it. And you also need a whole lot of luck so that somebody else doesn't make your life hell. And it ain't as simple as they tell you in grade school. But it is good to have strong values and to maintain them in marriage, in crime, in war. Always and everywhere. I messed up. So did Polly and Sam. We wanted a better life, but in the end, we were a lot worse off than most other people. You know, I think it's important to keep a balance in things. Yeah, balance, that's the right word. Because the guy who wants too much risks losing absolutely everything. Of course, the guy who wants too little from life might not get anything at all.
the rings, the ice ladies like rings for pocketbooks Took the mix, thought he'd never see the click Slapped on a wrist, his case was dismissed You see him on a talk show, it pays if you're rich pops Grease the bull, 